Good afternoon, everyone. I am John Allen, Head of Insight and Social Research for HMCTS, and I'm going to talk to you today about a research-informed behavioural trial that we are aiming to launch later this month. So the purpose of this trial is to improve defendant engagement in the process, both pre-trial and at court itself. The aim is through the use of behavioural science um, and behavioural science techniques to encourage specifically the take up of legal advice and representation early whilst they're in custody and in so doing improve defendant attendance at and preparation for court. I will quickly talk through now the, the background and genesis of this project. As, uh, as part of reform here at HMCTS, we have been looking for ways to improve court efficiency. Defendant engagement is itself key for a functioning and efficient court system. Uh, defendants, of course, must be engaged for it to work. And we were aware of anecdotal information about increasing litigants in person, uh, in this case, unrepresented defendants, and about existing lack of preparedness uh, for court and the impact that that can have in terms of delays to trials, uh, and not just delays to trials, but also crack trials, and consequently, the negative impact that it can have on the victims and, and witnesses' experience as well. So we want to change that. Um, so we want to improve attendance and preparedness of defendants through the uptake of legal representation, improving the efficiency of the process, and in doing so, hopefully the experience for all of our users. To that end, uh, pre-COVID, we investigated existing literature on the topic, uh, along with including questions in a separate piece of research with defence representatives that we conducted for their perspective on the best way to encourage defendant engagement. But we still also wanted more on the perspective of defendants themselves. So uh, to that end, last year we commissioned a piece of qualitative research to speak to defendants to get that perspective uh, on how to improve their engagement. Uh, following a competitive tender exercise, we uh, awarded the research um, to Revolving Doors Research Agency, and they managed to recruit 37 defendants um, for interview, which was no small task given the, the impact and the challenges of COVID. And from these interviews, they provided us uh, with a number of recommendations. And what was clear and critical key from these uh, these recommendations was the, the central importance of early engagement with defendants. This slide shows some of those recommendations uh, from that research that, uh, that ended up informing this, this behavioural study. Um, as you can see, these revolve around better informing defendants about their rights and the importance of representation, as well as providing them with written information in easy read format at the point of charge about their journey and also how to go about preparing for their court experience. So with the, the evidence from this research, uh, we set about doing a behavioural analysis and diagnosis to help determine how to approach actioning these recommendations uh, in order to produce the desired behaviour. Uh, my team used the COMB tool. Um, for those of you that don't know, that stands for Capability, Opportunity and Motivation. So this slide shows some examples of, of some of the potential issues or behavioural barriers that we needed to address. So in in terms of defendant capability, that could include a lack of knowledge of how legal representation could benefit them or how to get it, or indeed that, uh, that it is free. Um, and in terms of opportunity, 
do they have the resource to contact legal representation or the understanding or indeed belief that others do and that it is a, a common occurrence and finally there in terms of motivation is there a belief that legal representation will not help um, and do they see getting it as as delaying their departure from police custody which uh, as we know is something that they want to to leave as soon as possible So armed with the uh, the combi analysis, the, the team then considered uh, this behavior change will that we've shown here to help develop potential interventions to address those barriers that were, were identified. Uh, and in doing so, they settled on three areas, education, persuasion and the environment. So for education, the aim is to increase understanding of how to get legal representation and importantly why they should consider doing so. Uh, for persuasion the intention is to use behaviourally informed communications to encourage them to consider and then act and finally for environmental we plan to adapt the physical environment to facilitate the take-up of legal representation through addition of this educational information. So this summary slide gives uh, an overview of the trial that we now intend to conduct uh, informed by the research and analysis I've spoken about. So in summary, we will focus on encouraging defendants to take up legal advice and representation during their time in custody and at the point of charge, importantly. And this will be tested through a pilot at Norfolk and Suffolk Police Forces. With the plan being uh, to compare to our control site uh, or station in this case and if the if the trial proves successful in terms of increasing take of legal representation then we will consider options for a, a wider adoption uh, now i'm going to go into a little bit more detail on the trial design itself before coming on to the tools that uh, we will be using in this trial uh, as I said, we want to provide behaviourally informed messaging at different points during custody to help reinforce the message that it is available and it can be helpful. So we aim to introduce messaging in custody suites and within that the various rooms they will be in during their time in custody and as I said also at the point of charge as well. Specifically, uh, we have developed a leaflet that they will receive when getting booked in uh, to the station, some messaging to be painted on the ceiling of their custody cell, and also a series of posters for use around the custody suites. And as I say, in rooms that they will be processed through, such as the holding cell, uh, the breathalyzer and fingerprinting rooms, and also the consultation room. Uh, as always, uh, with any research or behavioural trial, it's important that we tested these draft intervention tools um, before we go into any live environment. So we conducted some user testing in September this year with a sample of defendants. And this slide shows the draft leaflet that we designed to encourage the take up of legal representation that is provided or will be provided once the defendant is booked in. Um, and the results of that testing. Uh, as you can see, there were some, some positives uh, and some negatives highlighted from that process. Um, by way of example, um, you can see in terms of positives, the users understood the message that it's never too late to get legal advice. And they also appreciated the section that was included on what to say to a solicitor. On the less positive front, uh, users did not understand how to tell police they wanted legal advice and they also had questions um, as to the quality and trustworthiness of that advice. The second leaflet, the one provided at point of charge, also prompted uh, some positive and negative feedback and this slide 
shows the first page of that draft leaflet. And as you can see, users appreciated knowing that they were entitled to representation irrespective of whether they were guilty or not, um, but they felt the importance of getting it um, was lost as it wasn't prominent enough um, in the material. Similarly, uh, as seen here on the second page of that same leaflet, uh, users were positively surprised that they could access legal support on the day of the court hearing and found contacts helpful. Um, but on the negative, they, they felt the fact that solicitors were free did not feature sufficiently upfront um, in, in the communication. And they also expected more signposting um, to further information about the process of, of going actually going to court. So uh, in response to this, this testing and this feedback, uh, we've amended the leaflets for leaflet A then, the, uh, the booking in leaflet. We've changed the design, uh, so it's more intuitive from an ordering perspective. And we've actually, we've split it into two leaflets now, uh, one on how to get legal advice and the other on the process that the defendant will go through at the station. For Leaflet B, the point of charge leaflet, we have increased the size of the messaging around legal representation and we've moved the message around the solicitor being free to the first page. Um, and importantly, we've also included a new section explicitly signposting uh, to further potential support. Uh, this next slide shows the revised leaflet on how to get legal advice um, that the defendants uh, will now receive uh, on booking in. I would emphasize this is uh, at the moment still a draft. Um, there are still some edits to be made, um, such as the wording around the, uh, the merits of free advice, uh, which we are in discussion with the Law Society on. Um, but as you can see, we've included more there um, on how to get legal advice at the station. And uh, in terms of the leaflet provided at point of charge, uh, again, this is, is still in draft, uh, but we have actioned the key messages um, coming from the, the user testing, uh, including uh, the, the clear addition of a section which signposts now to uh, to further relevant information that uh, is available online um, and which should should hopefully help. Uh, it's uh, it wasn't only the leaflets though that uh, that we tested with our with our users. We uh, we also user tested the draft posters. And here you can see examples of two of them. Um, this was particularly helpful. We found we uh, we had clear messages coming from this user testing. In particular, the uh, the message you can see in the first poster there of "Don't be alone" uh, was considered too negative, and users preferred the more positive alternative, as shown on the second one there of of "Ask for help now," um, and. There was also some mixed views um, around the use of the image of the, the person alone, but on the whole, there was endorsement that uh, that that image was helpful and uh, general consensus that it felt it may well resonate uh, with defendants themselves in that situation. On the uh, on the back of that testing, we've again made some changes. Um, including opting for the more positive messaging of Ask for Help Now and uh, provided further clarity on each of the posters of how to go about getting legal representation. Um, we're also looking to potentially add some uh, some branding, some government branding um, to make clear to defendants where this messaging is actually coming from. And finally, uh, the uh, the colour 
the the background uh, green color as shown here was was much preferred um, by uh, by the defense we tested with. The purple color that I previously showed was uh, was was quite uh, well, was quite polarizing to be honest. Um, again, these are these are draft um, but near final versions of the of some of the posters. Um, the middle one there is the revised version of the earlier example that I that I showed you. So uh, that brings me to um, what are the uh, the next steps um, for the for the project? Well, firstly, we we need to finalize the materials uh, that I showed you, the the posters and the leaflets. Um, we then need to uh, to agree the precise wording of the in cell messaging um, that we intend to to literally paint on the ceiling of the the cells. Uh, and the practicalities of how we would implement that uh, at the intervention site. Uh, we also need to apply uh, easy read principles to the leaflets and translate them into the most common languages of the defendants going through those pilot sites. Um, then we will be in a position to go live with the with the posters themselves, uh, which I say we are we are aiming to do that by uh, by the end of this month. Uh, and then we'll follow that shortly thereafter with the, the leaflets uh, and the in-cell message. Uh, then, of course, the, uh, the million dollar question, uh, we need to see if we've had any impact uh, through this trial. Um, obviously, we're hoping that this will show an effect. Um, and to that end, we have agreed with the site for them to provide us with, uh, with data on the take up of legal representation at both the, the intervention and control sites. Um, and we have uh, baseline data for this uh, at both. Uh, we're also considering right now what other further metrics we might be able to uh, to use uh, in order to to help demonstrate the the impact of these interventions. Uh, that's uh, that's the end of my presentation. That's all I wanted to cover today. Hopefully that was interesting and uh, gives you a flavour of what we're trying to do and why we're trying to do it and and how we're going to go about it. Uh, so happy now to uh, to take any questions. Uh, thank you, John, for that uh, presentation. So we're now going to have time for your questions, which you can continue to post using the Q&A chat function. So first question for you, John. Um, what's the current level of, of uptake of legal representation by defendants in the pilot sites? Yes, so uh, currently uh, in the pilot sites, the, the level of uptake of, of legal representation is a is around is approximately 60 percent so you've got 40 percent of defendants uh, who who aren't taking up so that that gives you quite a um a good potential to to show some increase um so yeah it's it's at a, a level where we would hope that the interventions will have an impact and uh, next question are you working to influence what police custody officers say to suspects um that's that's a very a very interesting question. We we did actually consider that as one of our interventions um, at the early stages uh, of design of this project. Um, there is a, currently a, a script that the uh, the officers use. Um, we did start to discuss what could be what could be possible there. We focused in the end on these interventions, which obviously I've covered today. But this is a starting point. As I say, this is a, a, essentially a, a trial, a proof of concept. So there is real potential if this shows some success for us to start looking at other ways to to potentially influence, um, including that looking at that particular wording um, and and also other ways like, for example, potentially uh, the inclusion of text messaging and uh, how we might use that to, to, the, to the benefit. So so, yeah, something we did we did consider, but in the end settled on these these elements for this particular trial. Thank you. Um, one person has commented on how difficult and challenging it can be for people in custody for the first time uh, who who haven't um, who don't have any knowledge of the system. Uh, do we have any reflections and comments on this? Um, absolutely, I think that is that is a uh, it, it's a key issue, a key problem that we have in the in in, and that came out in many ways of the user testing that we did with the leaflets. There was a uh, particularly the one leaf that, that had what's going to happen in custody as well as the the messaging around legal advice so that's was a key 
point as to why we thought, well, let's separate these leaflets out because there's clearly a need for for people that are coming in to understand what's happening to them at this point in time and what's going to happen to them next. Um, and they need that kind of information provided and that signposting. So, yeah, absolutely. It's, it, it from the from the research that we did before this trial um, and from the user testing we did of the, these materials, it was clear that there there is a um, uh, there can be rather a lack of, uh, of understanding and that there is a need to address that. Um, and do you think the COVID-19 uh, pan pandemic and police custody legal advice moving remotely specifically has affected take up of legal advice? It's a very good question. Um, well, we'll be able to, we should be able to see that because what we do have from our pilot sites um, is, is so not just baseline data, but we have trend data on the take up of legal advice and representation um, at these sites. So. Um, yeah, we'll be analysing that and see. So we should, we, like I say, we've got a long trend of that as well, a matter of years. So we'll be able to see how it has been stable in recent months. I can say that, but um, we can certainly see if kind of the COVID period and pre-COVID period and hopefully post-COVID period, um, whether there is any change um, in our control site. Uh, the next is a comment, not a question. Um, uh, it's that this sounds like um, important work and uh, giving you best wishes for its success. Thank you. Um, uh, so next question, how long will the trial last? Uh, the trial is uh, the trial itself is uh, is intended to last uh, for six months, um, essentially. Uh, we've done uh, quite a lot of statistical calculation in terms of how long we need to run the trial for in order to detect a change, a statistically significant change, basically a real change uh, in terms of 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 the, of the take up of legal representation. So if we run the trial for six months, given the through flow that we've got at the site, at the sites and the control site, we should then be able to detect a change of around five percentage points. So which we which hope would be um, a reasonable expectation uh, given the the kind of combining of these different intervention tools um, and their current level of take up. So if we see a change, so basically after six months, we're running it for that amount of time, um, we'd be able to detect any change that is of five percentage points or larger. Now, why is the trial being run in Norfolk and Suffolk? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, uh, part of the, the reason for that is that, um, and a very big part, is that we were very fortunate that um, as uh, the, a, a, a representative from Norfolk and Suffolk on their superintendents was uh, seconded to our crime reform programme uh, earlier in the year and we were already developing, uh, we'd done the research and we were developing this behavioural trial and uh, as time would have it they were they were very keen in kind of um, the potential for this and they they were very instrumental in kind of facilitating um, access to the right people um, at the at the pilot sites uh, in Norfolk and Suffolk. So uh, that was a fortunate happenstance that they were there at that time. Uh, we were already kind of looking to see what areas would would work well for this trial and like I say given the that in combination with the kind of the level of take up that they had and the fact that they had data that we could look at um, kind of came together to to um, allow us to um, start having those discussions and then move to agreement that this was a, a good place for us to do the trial. And uh, we don't have any more questions John so if you could advance to the final slide. Um, uh, so that brings us to the end. Um, thank you, John, for a really interesting session. And thanks to all those that joined and asked questions. Um, please don't forget the, that we have the Q&A panel, uh, which will be closing the event. So if you want to submit a question in advance, please email uh, change something that matters at justice.gov.uk. Thank you.